So it's been a while since I played a, an online round of golf on E6 Connect. Um, it's been uh, busy getting to the end of the year and the Christmas season and took a few days from work off and just enjoying life. Uh, today, current local weather here, 40 degrees. So in my little simulator bay, even though we have air conditioning, um, 40, 40 degrees in a, in a garage, it's, it's hot. But um, another reason I just kind of put off uh, some playing of E6 Connect is the software has got so many glitches right now. Um, personally, only my personal opinion, and I do expect software simulator golf is going to have some issues. It's not going to be 100% um, realism and accurate, but wow, the last little while there's been some real glitches that make it frustrating to play this, um, play with this software. And I'm comparing, say, E6 in this case against um, FSX 2020. Uh, today, in, under my opinion, there's, there are so many differences between the software and, and a lot of great pros and cons to E6 as well as FSX 2020, but in, in regards to glitches in the software and ball physics and um, things like the spin on the greens or, or hitting with the well-known uh, comment of a Velcro putt, of a putt that is a 40-footer, you give it a whack with a putter and it only goes a foot. Those sorts of things are getting quite frustrating. Um, for me as well as uh, I've seen a lot of clubs, 8 irons, 7 irons, go 200, 230 yards. Um, obviously in the real world that's, that's not even close to being realistic. I don't, <clears throat> I don't mind a flyer from now, every now and then, but uh, it's getting a little out of control and turning, uh, in my opinion only, uh, E6 into a bit of an arcade game instead of uh, a golf simulator where you can work on your game and, and get some good competitions online. But uh, I have never and I will not ever give up on E6. Uh, they're doing a lot of good work. They're trying to make the repairs, trying to get the fixes in. Um, trying to wait patiently, so I did take a little bit of time off from uh, golf using E6. But uh, I figured today um, I got a, a, some spare time, so I'm going to give it a shot and, and see if I can uh, regain some love for the software right now. Well, we hit the fairway on the first swing of the day, so that's a good start. <laughs> I'm a sucker for my own punishment. Um, even in real life golf, as we all know, we should practice and we should warm up at the driving range prior to. Um, in my local area, uh, I play bright and early in the morning. Like I said, it's 40 degrees here right now and it's uh, noon. It's actually 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, I try to get in, uh, get around to golf in the real world environment at 6, 6.30 in the morning. Um, unfortunately, the driving ranges aren't open at that time and I'm way too lazy to get into the golf sim and, and hit some shots before driving down to the golf course. So I play a lot of golf without warming up. Um, it's definitely not helping my older body, but uh, it is what it is. That was a good shot. You got to come to expect, and that looked like it had a little bit of slope to the hole from where I landed the ball. But um, again, what I call some of the glitches on E6 Connect are the amount of backspin that I get. And a lot of people say they don't get the backspin on playing uh, rounds on E6 Connect um, like others. And I think it's just all about the ball striker that you are. And, and if you're a higher spin, uh, uh, ball striker, you're just going to feel the pain playing simulator golf. If you're typically a, a person that doesn't hit a lot of uh, high spin golf shots in the real world, um, you're not going to you're not going to feel the pain. That's just the nature of the beast. Um, unfortunately, uh, as no matter what I do, I try to change the golf ball to a lower spinning for a simulator golf here, and they still spin like crazy. So. Um, that, like that particular shot here was 10,000 RPM. I hit a lob wedge for that uh, 90 yarder. And um, yeah, you're going to get some backspin on it, but typically in the real world, they don't come back 15, 20 feet. So 
hopefully that's getting worked on and I'm sure it is, so we'll see how those um, improvements come in the future. fairway finder didn't hit that one very well but uh, stayed quite straight <clears throat> so uh, choice of weapons is going to be the sand wedge for me here 98 yards I currently hit my sand wedge about 115 so I am a little bit in between clubs a 100 yard shot on the real golf course, I would hit a lob wedge. It's about a 95 to 100 yards for me. But uh, here in the simulated golf, it'll have so much spin on it with a full swing that uh, I just can't be confident with that shot. So I gotta try to figure out this in between club number here. See if we can uh, get something to work. Ooh, that's deep. Yeah, I hit it a little too far. Some backspin on that one would have been very handy, but we landed it right on the fringe there, so we didn't get that opportunity. And it looks like we're not going to get the opportunity with uh, the putter either from the fringe. Um, typically, I would like to putt this shot because it is on the, the first or the second cut of the green here, right on the fringe edge. So. I'm just not trusting that um, that unknown Velcro putt is what I like to call it and what others like to call it, I guess. So I'm going to choose to chip this and watch that 10, uh, 10 inch downhill. Well, chipping was a good, uh, a good idea. Nicely in the hole there. We got a 154-yard shot. I like my 9-iron for anything around 155 to 158. Two feet downhill. Almost three feet. Just going to try to hit a nice smooth 9-iron and see if we can get something on the green here. that a pull to the left <coughs> and it went far too to pull. Yeah that was a bad miss hit. <coughs> Yuck. Well now we're in trouble, hey? 31 yards. Got this tree there, whether that's a problem or not. So this is a skinny little fairway. <clears throat> I'm playing for the, the stock standard fade with the driver. Anything um, short of where my marker is there is fine. Through this little gap here, if that's possible, 
220 to there, 246 to the pig. We can hit a slicey one up through that gap. I don't know if that's possible, but we're going to give it a try. And get it to get to fade onto that green. That would be absolutely ideal. Well, we got through the hole and we got through the gap and we had the shot shape we were looking for, but just didn't get all the distance. We needed probably another five, five, six yards. Might have got to the edge of the green. Pretty happy with uh, the execution, if I'm be honest. Seventy-six feet and everything is uphill. Stop. Stop, 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 stop. Ah. I hear a lot of people are talking about um, the nice to haves around being able to see the grid past the hole. As you can see on here, you don't get to see what's really past the hole. Um, obviously, I don't need to on this particular shot, but on that last one, Maybe with a little more study and a little playing around, I could have understood that there's a giant slope there and I would have tried to come up or aim a little higher. But um, anyway, rookie mistake. You can't win them all. We got a 14 foot crazy type of a putt here. Downside is, is if we get below the hole, it's probably going to run away and we're going to have to putt again. And we don't want to do that. Yeah, that's a wild green. Yeah, you can see the temperature warning that I'm running up in the top left hand corner. That's from my projector. So this could be a, a short video, to be honest with you, but I don't uh, want to stop playing. I'm playing all right. I think I'm a couple under right now. The temperature in my sim bay, probably about 22, 23 degrees, but if I stick my head up closer to the ceiling where my projector is mounted, it's probably more like 30 degrees up there. Again, it is 40 degrees Celsius outside today, and I'm hoping this projector is going to hang on. I don't have a fan or anything like that that I can uh, stuff up there to get some air movement. Hopefully it hangs in there. We're going to be taking a small delay. to stop on me. It's either that or it'll melt down one or the other. So what do we got left? 38 yards. It's kind of a tough number to be honest for me. Yeah, that was a chicken shit shot.
Whoops. That's a lot of strokes for 37 yards. Anyway. Got a 146, nine feet downhill. Playing about 143. I like my pitching wedge for about 135 to 140. Um, let's see how this goes. I guess if you're still watching, no one really knows what the score is with my temperature warning there for the projector. Um, minus two right now. Pull seven, so not too, too bad. Didn't hit that as well as I'd want to. Just high in the club face, lost a lot of power. So that carry number on GC quad was 283, carry on here was 261, a total of 283, so it's a little bit, uh, a little bit out, not sure which one, but one of them's out. Thin that shot was, but worked out all right. <clears throat> that ox 
awkward 9,700 yard shot for me again. So, so far, some of these um, painful glitches that I was talking about at the start of uh, this video, I haven't seen a lot of that. Maybe one kind of wild backspin shot, but otherwise, not too bad, really, so far. They are quite random, so they, they happen when you forget about it and you least uh, expect it. did almost 300 degrees around that hole. That would have been nice to see that go in. Darn it. That would have been really nice to see that one go in. Seven foot punt here with that uphill. To get this anywhere in Jimmy Range would be happy. Oh, I smashed it. Slow down. 
Uh, yeah, they hit that one way too hard. Turned into a bit of a par round here. Too much draw. That was pure hook. <clears throat> Got a 201 shot. These are the ones that go bad for me. I would normally hit a 5 iron, 200 to 205. Um, but from time to time, you can really nuke a long iron in this E6 Connect software. So I'm going to opt to hit a 6 iron, and it's, it's really just a guess. Six iron would have been in the right club in that case. The pull didn't help though. get up and down when you miss on a par three. Nice one, but got away with it. Shorty hole, isn't it? Oh, I wanted to fade. 
made that ball. Get out of the trees. Mm. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, I've got a miss to the left. That one was supposed to be a simple four iron fade and it was a full hook. Uh, that one got there, we tagged tree branches the whole way. It was a gamble. Desperate need of making a putt. <clears throat> Go in. Nice. feet downhill. Playing 186. 186 is probably a good six iron for me. Nothing too hit hard. Smooth six iron, but E6 connect, we're hitting seven irons. I don't normally carry a 7 iron 190 yards. My 7 irons are about 177, 180. So a little discrepancy and I got GC quad here carry number 181. So that's about right for my 7 iron, 177, 180, somewhere in there. Um, connect there, you see E6 connect had a carry of 189, so 190 basically. Got a little downhill ten foot putt here. <clears throat> Tricky one. Driver hasn't been treating you very well here so far today, though. typically want to be. Little six iron hook, low. <laughs> I don't know if that's possible, but we're going to try. <laughs> yeah, no, that was just hit thin. We didn't even hit the balls. Didn't hit it very clean at all.
go. I did pull that one a little bit with my putter, so to be expected for the mess. Had decent weight. I got a mark on my mat, my hitting mat here out in the front. So I see that one left, left of my line the whole way, and that was going to happen. Ah. Stop that pull hook. Go from one side, from left to the right side of the fairway. Pretty much any kind of little chip chip shot around the green like that, I'll use my gap wedge, my pitching wedge, about 90% of the time. Um, specifically if they're going uphill, I definitely want to use that one if it's a quite downhill, severe slope. Depending on the shot, I will opt to use my lob wedge because I'll get a little more spin, a little more check on it, is my theory. And it seems to generally work well. And obviously any um, video or any teaching kind of a golf show, everyone's always asking the amateurs to use a, a gap wedge or all the way up to a seven iron basically for those types of chips and uh, get used to that before we pretend we're all two or pros and using lob wedges or 60 degrees to chip those in. wondering in between these two trees if there's enough of a 
gap in between there. Thread the needle kind of a shot. It all depends if we hit it just right and it goes through that hole and then we get the right distance. That's kind of a technical shot, this one. did catch some branches, so I don't know how close we were to getting it on the green or not on that one. It stayed pretty straight, but it might have been the branches that kept it that straight, it's hard to say. Ah. Oh, well. Got a little extra hitting math on that strike. <laughs> So I did notice in whatever update, I guess it was probably the most recent uh, E6 update, putting is slightly harder than it used to be. So we did get that one bogey that nipped us in the butt, didn't we? Otherwise we could have had a minus four finish. I got this goofy ass give a stroke back handicap, but uh, I'll take it for not playing any simulated golf for a couple weeks now anyway. So if you guys lasted this long throughout the video, um, thanks for watching. Soon we'll have some more. I'll uh, get some FSX 2020 um, rounds in. Subscribe if you like the content. If you have any suggestions, um, feel free to put a comment below and we'll see if we can improve some of these videos. And again, thanks for watching.